Hey guys, it's Chris. How you doing? This video is going to be called Reach Into Sinners With Love But Don't Have Fellowship With Them. I want to do this video because I'm getting a lot of questions on how do I win my mother, how do I lead my friends to Christ, and I simply answer like this, you don't. You don't lead your mother and father and brother to Christ. You don't lead your friends to Christ. You try to. Leave me alone, Turk. You try to do it, but it's not biblical. Jesus didn't have any mighty work power among his family. Not because he couldn't if he wanted to, because that was the example that the father and the son were trying to set. The Bible says come separate, guys. The Bible says Jesus came to not unify the house, but to divide the house. A mother against her daughter, a father against his son. What I'm trying to say is, there's no such thing as a calling to win your family members. So you see, some people today say, um, you know, God chose me to win everybody in the house, and that's, that's impossible. God called you to come separate from your family and put conviction on them. The first one God chooses in the family is the chosen one to put conviction on them. Now, when you come separate, there might be one or two more people in the mix that are going to see you shine when you come separate. But, what I'm trying to say is, don't expect them to listen to you. You understand? Because in the Bible, when Jesus was walking around, and he was doing these miracles and preaching all this truth, they were saying, are you not the son of Joseph? Do we not know your brothers and sisters and all this garbage? You see, the thing is, in your own hometown and among the people you know, you are nobody special. But in the kingdom of God, you are royalty. You see, they're too stupid to see that you are a walking, eternal, royal child of God while they're burning and blinded by the demons. They're condemned already. They're held down by Satan. Now, for God's glory, some of them will get tossed into hell. The majority of them. And for God's glory... These people will be escorted before you, your family members, and they will be so ashamed to look at the light on you at the judgment when the sinners are escorted up before the Lord and the saints, okay? Because God will be glorified, and there's no way that your friends and your family are going to look at you as a joke and look at you like you're crazy and not get ruthless permanent torture for eternity by the Most High God. Because anyone that serves God's Son is like God's little baby. And anyone that calls that little baby a fool or stupid or crazy, just think about, some of you parents, just think about how you would feel if you had a little four-year-old kid and you sent them to school and all the kids made fun of them and picked on them how heartbroken you would be, and you would want to punch those other little kids right in the face. You'd want to knock their teeth out. And God has more wrath than man. And God will use that wrath when all is said and done and His Son comes back to divide the wheat and the tares over here. Because sometimes I think about it. My friends, my friends, I know how they look at me right now. If any of them watch this video, they look at me as just a crazy psychopath that was once evil, that couldn't deal with my misery anymore, and now I went nuts, so I believe in demons and Jesus. They don't realize I was actually chosen by God. They're too stupid to see me going around the world healing people over the phone, healing terminal diseases and casting demons out of people. They look at that, and they knew me in the past, and they figure, Chris is capable of setting up a scam like this. That he's capable of making people act like they're demon-possessed. This is what they think about me, guys. I know what they think. I'm not stupid. Now, I can't win any of them. 
and I can't win anybody in my family, they all think the same thing. And my Bible says that I'll have no power to do mighty works there. I couldn't cast demons out of any of them, I tried. Half of them wouldn't even let me pray for them. You know what I'm saying? But the point I'm trying to make is God sets up circumstances where you will have no power there. Because that's what his word says. A prophet has no honor in his own country. It said Jesus could do no mighty works there. Do you think you're more powerful than Jesus? Because I motion, if Jesus couldn't do any mighty works there, how the heck are you going to do mighty works there? How can I do mighty works there? How can anybody do it if the Son of God couldn't do it? They said save for him laying hands on a few people and healing some minor diseases that weren't that miraculous. Now, I was able to do that in my hometown. I laid hands on people and their backache disappeared instantly or some stuff like that happened. A few demons, they yawned out. But nothing miraculous enough to make people believe. You know why? Because God is not going to let your power manifest there because He wants you out of there. He wants you to be shamed. Don't you guys understand? If you are not shamed in your hometown, and you are not shamed amongst your family and everything else, there is no blessing for you. The blessing comes with the shame. The blessing comes when you are embarrassed for the sake of the kingdom of God. What else did I have to say? Oh, all right. So you can't win them. So now how do you handle them? You handle them by leaving the door open, telling them you love them, telling them they're going to go to hell if they don't listen to the doctrine of the Bible and the words you're preaching, and you come separate. Now you'll say, well, how can I save them if I'm separate? Go win a thousand other souls. Go start performing miracles. Let them see a thousand people that you've changed their life. And maybe then they'll start to say, well, wow, um, how could he get all these people to be acting like this? How could he get all these people? How could, how could she or he be going out there building this big ministry when, you know, this person knew nothing about God? They were a filthy sinner. What blessing is on this person? Okay. You see, when I argue with my family, I won't call it arguing, I'll call it strong evangelism because there's no time, there's nobody, there's no people that I get more serious with my evangelism than with my family. I don't hold anything back because I know that I'm going to get another chance at that evangelism so I don't have to, I don't have to even dance around the fact one, one bit. I'll come right out and say, if you do not listen to the words that I'm saying that are backed up by the Bible and power, you are going to hell. Okay, so you better wake up. That's what. That's how I evangelize to my family. Not like some people who are telling me that they just are, they're, they're tapping on their family members. They're just saying, well, this is my belief and this is what it is. No, you lay the hammer on them. They can't get rid of you. You're their child, you're their brother, you're their mother. And if they do, good, good. I mean, the only advice I could give you guys is how I did things. How can I advise you any different? Because I'll tell you what, my brother is starting to realize something's going on. You know, something's up. Like, who are all these people that are choking stuff up? And, and they, they're starting to believe that this is possible. My father already, I think, believes this, po this is possible, but he doesn't believe he has to... Be perf live perfectly by the Bible, which you do. You have to live by the Bible. Um, and my mother just thinks that I'm nuts. Okay, so, you know, it's Jezebel, unfortunately, but what can you do? The only thing I can do is come separate. I don't want it to be like this. But it is what it is, so... You handle them, you reach in with love, you leave the door open, and I really won't hold more than a five-minute conversation with my family that doesn't involve me leading them to Christ. 
because for them to be talking about sports and and my job and my future and my new place and the weather while they're hellbound is just vain. It's just vain and ignorant. It makes no sense. So, if you have friends or family, you give it the three time chance. You give a person three chances. You tell them about God. If they fluff you off and just go back to doing what they're doing, you do it again. If they start appeasing you by saying, yeah, okay, I believe that, but you don't see their actions change and you don't see them serving God indeed, tell them I can't hang out with you anymore. You don't follow Jesus Christ. I love you. This is my new faith, but I have to come separate by my new faith. That's what my Bible says. Okay? The Bible says have no fellowship with unbelievers. Have no fellowship with sinners. It says those who are sinners love the company of those who do the same. Alright? Get away. You have no choice in the matter. Alright? You have to listen to what I'm saying. It's biblical. Alright? Everything I'm telling you is biblical. I'm not making this up. So, be blessed in Jesus' name, and have a good day. Bye.